Well, thank you, Homie, for that really stirring and daunting introduction. Uh, I'm just going to talk very briefly about what this project is. Um, it was a more than four-year project. It was a result of Lindsay Waters, editor at Harvard University Press, um, deciding that after uh, a uh, new history of French literature, a new history of German literature, there had to be an American volume that by nature would be radically different in concept and execution. Um, the society, the literature, the history that it would be tracing or remaking or reimagining would be uh, much shorter. The German and French volumes, they all began around, I think, 800 A.D. Uh, they traced the development of a national literature that in many ways preceded the um, modern nation states that we know today. Whereas you can argue that in the United States, in America, um, it, is the, it is the political formation, it is the creation of the nation that the society, and thus its conversation about itself, its literature, uh, flows from. Um, that there is a prehistory and then there is a history. There are many, many ways to see this. So Werner and myself and Lindsay together worked with an editorial board of 12 people, mostly younger academics, not entirely, uh, not all academics, not all young. Um, and while we asked, we, we looked for people who had deep and, and, and acute knowledge of certain fields, whether it had to do with art, whether it was science, whether it was American history, whether it was the history of the Spanish presence in, um, in the Americas. Um, there was no person who was asked to join this board and to join its conversations who was there because of his or her special knowledge alone. The entire field was absolutely up for grabs um, for anyone's part. And that extended both to deciding what the book would cover, what its specific entries would be, what its turning points, what events, what moments when something happened that left things seeming different, uh, where the unimaginable had suddenly become not only possible but inevitable. Uh, everybody weighed in on those questions, as well as who should write any given entry. Um, it was a wide-ranging and congenial, uh, never testy, sometimes fraught conversation that went on for years. Um, what it came down to, though, in terms of how this book came together, was the question the editors asked themselves, and Werner and myself, I think, in particular, over and over and over again, hundreds of times, who do we want to hear from? Given this question, given this, this event, given this turning point, who do we want to hear from? Not who's the best person to um, uh, write the definitive essay on, um, on this subject, but who do we want to hear from? Who will tell us something we don't know? Who will approach this in a way that we would never have imagined or expected? Now, the very first entry in the book is by Toby Lester, who's a geographic historian. Um, and it's about the um, moment in 1507 when the word America first appeared on a map. And one of the things you get from this opening essay, the tremendously engaging and and lively and you are there uh, essay is a sense that uh, of suspense and of contingency <coughs> and the way in which at every moment you're made aware that this didn't have to turn out the way it did. A lot depended on chance, a lot depended on what Machiavelli called fortune or fortuna and what that meant was apprehending chance and then knowing when to take advantage of it, when to seize the opportunity uh, that time and place offers you. And that's, that's what you get right at that crucial moment. Now, the very last entry of the book is Kara Walker on the election of um, Barack Obama. 
Now, the last entry in the book was supposed to be Werner, uh, Werner's and, and my um, essay on Hurricane Katrina, which was always Werner's idea. And we had written that. The book was done. The book was completely finished. And then Barack Obama threw a monkey wrench into the whole project by, um, you know, creating a moment where the previously unimaginable um, came to seem uh, not just possible but inevitable. And there was a lot of chatter. We've, we've got to somehow bring this into the book. And I resisted it. I, I thought, who knows what this means? Who knows what this is about? Finally, it came down to, you know, a, an, an agreement. Whatever this is going to be, it's not going to be, what does this all mean? What does this portend for our country? Must we now re-examine our whole national existence? I thought, why not just get someone who was in the crowd at Grant Park and say, well, this is what it felt like. Just, you know, an on-the-scene report. But then we asked that question again. Who do we really want to hear from? Is there one person who we just like to know, what did you think? You, you specifically, not somebody else. And we thought of the artist Carol Walker. And we contacted her and she essentially said, I'm too busy. This isn't the sort of thing I do. You're not really paying me anything. <laughs> but how could I resist? I can't. We also said, by the way, you're going to have the last word in this 1,100-page book, <laughs> which she does. We had no idea what she was going to do. I th kind of thought she would write an essay. She does write essays as well as create extraordinary artworks. Um, and she said, well, how much space do I have? And I said, nine pages, thinking, you know, nine type pages. That's pretty much what all the essays were. So she thought that meant she had nine panels, and she produced nine um, panels that no one else in the country would have even thought to produce, let alone been able to. And there they are, the last words of the book. And they start out with panels of people yelling and shouting at each other and somebody staying up all night worrying and words flooding the panels. And by the time you get to the end, it is pure silence. And that's how the book ends, with silence. We had no idea what she would produce and we wanted to know what it would be. And now there are other stories I could tell you. I could go on for the rest of the afternoon, but as I understand it, some other people have claim on the time. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Shomi, for introducing this project so well. And thanks, Grail, who already gave us a very good sense of where we're coming from. You mentioned Wendell at the beginning, uh, who is a very good uh, sounding offboard about what we did not try to do, because the essence of Wendell's literary history is also a prescriptive attitude. If the thrust was to deal with the anxiety of American culture in relationship to England, the branch from the English tree hadn't flourished enough to really justify a true literary history. It also required Wendell to be uh, rather negative on those voices that didn't sound British. So Whitman was somebody who really couldn't stand, uh, was the influence of the motley throng of New York that you know, sort of swept away from the, from the British uh, context. Uh, anyway, just thinking, I, I read some of his letters and he came to Harvard on horseback from Marlborough Street uh, so that may be another uh, uh, historical divide that separates the projects. I think in addition to what, uh, what Creel uh, said, what we were trying to do uh, was to include not only literary text, though the focus of it is the literary, but also a broad array of non-explicitly fictional or literary genres, so sermons, political texts, but broader than that, uh, also uh, films, uh, sculpture, uh, music, uh, so a, a broad a range of things that had been made in America, but always with a textual or literary base, so that about 180 of the essays are explicitly uh, literary, and then some provide cultural context for the explicit uh, literary or can be read in that way. So, you know, maybe if you open the book and look at Winchester Rifle and say, what did he ever write? Uh, you know, that uh, would be a, a, a surprising uh, difference. We have one entry on Alcoholics Anonymous that starts, that ends with a sentence, hello, my name is, 
uh, dash. So you can fill in your own name at that moment after asking the reader how many hours have you spent on your computer today.